Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. My tone is not available. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. Oh, you're living the dreams, DP. Yeah. Devil me care attitude. <laughs> Strong guys. Beautiful girlfriend. Sorry I'm late. I was rounding up all the gluten in the world and launching into space where it can't not hurt us ever again. Kiss me like you miss me, Red. Hey, Matt, it's Haley Sales from Deadpool. Just uh, trying to reach you. Uh, give me a call back when you get a chance. Thanks. On the line, we have Haley Sales talking to us from where are you talking to us from, Haley? Uh, right now, I am on Vancouver Island in Canada, British Columbia. Funnily enough, I've just had an interview with Peter Outerbridge, who's in Toronto. Oh, oh you, you and your Canadians, eh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. One of the questions I asked Peter was, which is better, Vancouver or Toronto? Oh, well, I'm very partial to Vancouver. If you want to go see music and have some nightlife, probably would opt for Toronto, but... I mean, if you want to go to, like, a magical mystery land, then Vancouver's got the landscape and, and whatnot. So you can't really go wrong, mm. honestly. I prefer Vancouver, personally. But, yeah. I like bears. <laughs> oh, my God! You'd never believe this. I'm on my parents' blueberry farm just taking a, a week off, and uh, there are two resident bears. The other day, we walked outside, and they were literally within a, a stone's throw distance just checking out the duck's food and they just stared at us two huge black bears so you can come to the farm and uh, hang out with the black bears anytime you like so now we were walk around with a hatchet just in case <laughs> all i got from that anecdote was resident black bears basically there's black bears <laughs> they just hang out with us pretty much they feel like pets except you don't want to touch them or get close so you've never petted the black bears? No, not yet. You never know. Maybe I'll maybe I'll start becoming a bear whisperer at some point, but not yet. <laughs> oh, dear. Dear me. Well, obviously, we've got you here to talk about Deadpool 2. Not bears? Not bears, no. What? <laughs> or, or blueberries, for that matter. <laughs> okay, well, let's go down to business. So, yes, Deadpool 2, it's come out. And it's a sequel to the ever-popular Ryan Reynolds original. From what I can tell from reading up on Ryan Reynolds, he's a bit of a goofer. <laughs> <laughs> he's such a sweetheart. So, so the day I was in, we were, you know, we we were filming um, the the explosion scene, and uh, yeah, you know. It's really interesting because on set, sometimes if you have kind of a supporting smaller part, you never even meet the leads. But Ryan definitely made a point to come up and uh, had a good chat with me. And he is literally like he is in the movies. He's just really entertaining and really kind and and a uh, all around good guy. Pretty funny. Gave me some some tips on writing. He's awesome. So I I loved it. I had a great time. The directors. Sweet. Everyone was just so kind, so sweet. The audition process was really funny because I didn't know what I was auditioning for, and uh, they just had you improv. They just gave you this, like, here's your synopsis, blah, 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 and you go in and you improv, and then I didn't hear about it for two months and then randomly found out I got the part. <laughs> I was like, wait, what am I? Oh, my God. Yeah, it's pretty cool. The whole thing was really fun. Then we we didn't film for another five months. Yeah. And you're playing yes. Cable's wife. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that either until day of. <laughs> they had to be really secretive about it because apparently people were even trying to get into the studio to get their hands on a script and blow the plot line and whatnot. So, yeah, it was very, very fun and, and uh, secretive. Having worked on, you know, a range of everything from really high high profile projects to no profile projects at this point. That was one of the best experiences I had all around as far as people treating you very well and just being fun. It's just fun. I'm sort of going to give it away a bit at the end of the film. Mm -hmm. It's sort of a weird time travel <laughs> fourth wall thing. 
It is very interesting. I don't want to blow it for anyone. Yeah, it was it was a crash course in learning about where I was and what I was doing when I showed up, and they kind of just gave me the synopsis. Pretty interesting. Mm. I'm trying not to say too much. Mm. Yeah, the movie itself is it's really entertaining, and it does kind of twist around a bit, which I find fascinating. Mm. I mean, obviously, you're now part of the Marvel family in a sense, aren't you? I suppose so. Yeah. We'll see if I get to make any more cameos. <laughs> With all that time travel stuff, you never know. Oh, you're not in free, are you? <laughs> <laughs> not that I know of. Oh. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I, know. I thought we were going to get exclusive. Dear me. Mm. But, I mean, obviously you are part of the Marvel Universe now. It's massive. Yeah, it is. It's fascinating to me to see how the Marvel, Marvel world just keeps expanding and it's very interesting to me, like, what is it right now in this time that people are so intrigued by superheroes, like normal people with superpowers, and it's uh, it's really cool and, and timely, and yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited, even though it's a small a small part in the Marvel world to be a part of it. Maybe I'll develop superpowers someday. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> that follows quite well into my next question. <laughs> if you could have a superpower, what would it be? Mm. You know, it would be a tie between time traveling and being able to fly just because it would be so cool to fly. I don't know if that'd really do anything for you or be an asset, but it'd just be really fun. Time traveling might be more beneficial in the long run. How about you? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'll probably hang up and come up with a brilliant, mm. you know, unique thing, but yeah, I don't know. I was going to say read people's minds, but that'd probably be pretty frightening. <laughs> and Patrick Stewart wants his job back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, let's talk a bit about you, Haley. You yourself. What made you want to get into acting in the first place? Well, it was a pretty young start for me. I kind of just came out of the womb in love with music and acting, and was one of those, you know, little dorks that ran around in costumes and pretended they were you know being captured by witches and and whatnot as a very little kid and then around the age of five I fell in love with Judy Garland actually my friend played me one of her songs and there was some weird click that happened in me and I I decided that was my my life plan is that I wanted to be a actor and a musician and pretty much from there just really dove into it and started doing theater and I went to a an art school and just really tried to saturate myself with everything from the writing side, screenwriting side, to uh, dance and music, and took a breather, actually, from acting when I, I signed with Universal as a recording artist, and at that point, they didn't really think that it was good to do both. It's amazing how times have changed as a, a teenager at that point, and so I, I put acting aside, and then probably about, I guess it was six years ago now, I just... I just missed acting so much. I put a pause on music and dove into Hollywood, shall we say, and, and started out and started pushing for it because I, I just love it. It's so much fun to be able to tell other people's stories and basically get paid to make believe. Mm. But most of the time you're not paid. But <laughs> it's great when you get paid. Yeah, so that's, I guess that's in a nutshell, you know, how I got into it and, and whatnot. Well, I've looked on your IMDb. Mm -hmm. I hope you don't mind. This, you're going to have to correct me if I'm wrong on this. I think you'll know where I'm going with this. Basically, obviously, you've mentioned yourself just now that you were, or you are, should I say, a singer. Yeah. Yeah. Is it true, is it true that you co-wrote several songs with Sharon Stone? <laughs> oh, no. Now I know where you're going. Yeah, I did. The song, Like Never Before, there's a, a video of a rough mix of it out, but uh, it will actually be released in the next spring, spring 2019. But yeah, I got, I got to write a couple songs with her and she's a brilliant woman. Just went to her house and basically I sat on the piano and she's, she just sat on the couch and she's, she's a fantastic writer. So I would kind of come up with, you know, the melodies and, and the piano parts and we'd banter back and forth on the lyrics. And yeah, we came up with a, a pretty steamy love song. <laughs> that was, I guess, a couple years ago, 
but I, I did. It was my first co-writing experience ever, which was pretty fun and not normal, but I but I enjoyed it. Mm. And Sharon Stone is known for, is it Basic Instinct? Please tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't know if that was her breakout role or, or what, but yeah, she uh, she so she's a really good writer too. She's doing this on the side now. I never knew she was a singer. I don't know if she sings, but she she's really good at the writing. I don't think she's singing that day. I'm trying to remember, but she mm. probably can, considering she can probably do everything. Mm. But yeah, she's really into lyrics, from what I from what I recalled, and so we came up with like never before and a couple other ones that I haven't done yet. Now. Obviously, with these interviews, I try not to go into sort of the, the personal boundaries and that kind of thing. That's okay. I don't know how, how I'm going to put this across. Uh -huh. I mean, the chap I'm, I'm looking at the minute, I know his work quite well. And um, unfortunately, sadly, uh, he's passed on. Yes. Yeah. And uh, that's Corey Monty from obviously yeah. known for uh, Glee. Mm. Yeah. That's an interesting story. I, I, I'll give you a, a quick version of it. Uh, basically, my parents moved up to Vancouver Island from Portland, Oregon. I'm actually from the States originally. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> but we, we moved up when I was 16, so I just graduated from high school. And I was devastated to go from this bustling metropolis when I wanted to be a movie star to the middle of nowhere on an island. But... They convinced me by this um, acting boot camp that was going to be going all summer long on the island, led by this amazing woman, Maureen Webb. She she basically started me off. She got me going in acting when I was a teenager, casting director in the area. And so I went to the acting class over the summer, and Corey, he was just kind of starting out in acting, and he was the uh, assistant. And um, we actually we started dating. And so we got very close and he actually convinced me to do music because at that point I was like, all I want to do is I just want to be an actor. And I remember he sat me down. He's like, you have to do music too. And he just did a crash course in all his favorite artists. And so I of course was like, well, I'm going to go record some songs now to impress this guy. <laughs> we broke up, but stayed friends over, you know, I guess the next 10 years. And, um, a really heartbreaking thing that actually I have not told anybody is the day before he passed away, we talked for the first time in like two years. And uh, I'd lost his number, he'd lost mine kind of thing, and then we reconnected and we were supposed to meet up the next day and then I found out on Facebook that he'd passed away. And it was, it was very shocking because, you know, it was this weird feeling of like planning to go meet someone and then they just don't even show and of course you think oh they just blew me off and then to find out that it was a very very tragic definitely an accident he seemed very happy and very excited to start the next season so i i think it was definitely not intentional and something that uh, was a very very sad fluke i love him he, he means the world to me and definitely has inspired me a lot in music and and acting and Wish that hadn't happened. I remember one of the first things he told me as a kid was, Haley, never do drugs. And so I, I, I to this day, I'm like, no, no. I might do pot, might smoke pot, but I'm, I'm sticking away from everything else. So he's, he's been a huge influence on my life. Mm. <laughs> if I remember correctly, you can, you can tell me to shut up if you, want, if you really want me to. Um, okay. They did a wonderful tribute on, on the show. It, yeah, mm. my heart. But yeah, yeah, it's it was very very sad. I I owe him a lot. I mean, I owe him my music career really because he told me to do it. <laughs> so yeah, some of the first songs I wrote were uh, inspired by him, and yeah, he was a lovely man. He had such a big heart, really big heart. And from Vancouver Island, eh? You know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, to go back to, to business, obviously, you've obviously been in quite a lot of TV series and films. Which actors and actresses have been your favourites to work with and why, and who would you like to work with in the future? Oh, goodness. Most people are really lovely. I would say, you know, Ryan Reynolds was up there on the list of sweethearts. Mm, everyone from Supergirl was lovely. 
Oh, I, I don't even know if I can be specific about this because I, I haven't luckily had a bad experience yet. Yeah, the good doctor, they were sweethearts too. As far as who I'd love to work with, someday I want to do a musical, like um, be in a musical. So I think it'd be fun to get Channing Tatum's an awesome dancer, so maybe to do a musical with him. I'd love to play across Tom Hanks, like as his, you know, niece or daughter or something. He's just such a lovely human. It's pretty much anyone who's amazing. I think uh, Amy Adams would be really fun to work with. The list goes on. <laughs> I know that's not very specific. The list does go on, though. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, the other thing I noticed as well, mm-hmm. which I do have to pick up on, because I've just turned 30, I know. Congratulations. Thank you. I do remember Homeworld quite a lot. Mm-hmm. Really? Mm. That's awesome. <laughs> Oh, that that was fun. Those guys are so lovely to work with. It's the only voiceover work I've ever done, actually. But I guess, you know, working in the studio as a singer might help. But I didn't know, I mean, personally, I didn't actually know anything about Homeworld that much. And um, it was really fun. Basically, the greatest thing about voiceover work is you roll out of bed. Your hair is like in knots. You don't wear makeup, and you just go straight into a dark room and, and talk to a, you know, a microphone. <laughs> so it's this really wonderful balance to going to set where you spend two hours in the makeup chair and everybody's looking at you. It's just very relaxed. Yeah, I had fun. I got to learn a lot about the world. Obviously, thinking about that, gaming companies now use mocap in order to produce the games. Is that something you would like to try out? Oh, mocap? That would be really fun. It would be a learning experience. This was actually something cool about Deadpool. Basically, to be able to create a hologram of you uh, for burning up or, or whatever, basically whatever they want you to do, they, uh, they put you in this little box with hundreds of cameras that take a snapshot instantly. And then they have you kind of rotate slowly in a circle and they take a bunch of different pictures and they can create a hologram of you. It's so cool. I got to learn all about that on Deadpool. I didn't even know how that worked before. So instead of actually having you burn up <laughs> or, or, or the equivalent or a stunt person, they can just use like, you know, a digital version of you for, you know, like two seconds or maybe longer. I don't actually know how, how that works. It's pretty interesting what what people can do in film now is is pretty crazy. Mm. Well, on that basis, I'm going to give you a one minute plug to plug Deadpool two and <laughs> anything else you've got coming up. All right, well, definitely go see Deadpool two. It is absolutely amazing, and and then tweet out at Fox that you'd like to see that that Cable's wife girl again. And I'm going to have my album coming out this coming spring 2019 and i'm actually dropping some singles uh hopefully every month between now and then so you can go on to spotify Haley sales and follow me and uh or tweet at me or whatever you'd like and yeah go see deadpool listen to my music and send me a message on on twitter if you'd like <laughs> i've actually forgotten to ask you i've been completely rude about the um about the album what kind of style is it it's actually pretty different from the two i had put out actually pretty pretty tragic story i i spent five years recording my third record with verve in the u.s which is a universal label and then my my a r man and the president both left the company and the new team decided not to release my record like two weeks before release and then would not give it back and i spent two years in legal battles trying to get the rights to buy my record back and lost so just starting the new one and it's gonna be i would say kind of it's i love piano so it's piano piano driven kind of uh soul retro soul but but with a pop twist and if you could imagine a little bit of a judy garland style voice that's just kind of the way i sing so going that direction and basically using the whole team that i used for the last record that i can't release and doing it again so i'm lucky to have raised some money through pledge and 
creative BC and gonna I'm a little over labels, so I'm gonna do it on my own this time. Yeah. That must be absolutely pardon the word. Yeah. I spent like a solid year depressed. Just because you work so hard. I mean, I produced it too and raised the money. And and then to just have this company, it's not going to do anything with it. Just eat your eat your art, basically. It doesn't seem very fair. But I do kind of take some solace in the fact that things usually tend to happen for a reason, or at least for my track record, I've, or track record, I've seen that. So I'm just now getting to the point where I'm inspired to do new music. So I've gotten back... <laughs> I've gotten over the jaded feelings and I'm excited to, you know, kind of just do what I like instead of trying to do what I think other people will like, which is, I guess, the beauty of having your, your ass kicked a little bit. It humbles you to the point that you just want to do it be- because it's fun. But the new music will be awesome and it's uh, it's going to be easier because of having had that experience of recording those those songs. Someday it'll be like the lost record and will come out. <laughs> And uh, I'll get to hopefully rub it in some people's faces a little bit. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just a little. Well, Haley, it's been a pleasure interviewing you. We'll have to get you back. Yeah, anytime. You have my Skype now. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Uh, well, thanks very much for your time. Have a fun weekend and uh, definitely keep in touch. I'd love to be back on. Okay. Thanks very much, Haley. Yeah. Take care. Talk to you soon. Bye bye.